So, Deepa, let me know when to start. Okay, thanks. So, anyway, like I was saying, um, my first job at IIT Bombay as faculty was to help my colleague, Professor Deepak Fatak, who was a very charismatic guy. He's a Padma Shri now, uh, to set up the distance education program of IIT Bombay. And we bought a lot of VSAT bandwidth and we had remote centers in various colleges and we thought that by equipping teachers with the right skills, we could kind of help improve the state of the education in the country. And uh, when I tried to teach, so it was very good for things like uh, thermodynamics where there's lots of theory. But when it came to, you know how uh, Coursera courses are, right? Aise hi. Uh, when it comes to theory, it's very nice. But it comes apart when you try to train them in hardcore engineering skills, which is how to build things, you know, how to build something where the lights flash and kind of things move and all that kind of stuff, which is what the world is really all about. And I tried to, uh, so I used to teach embedded systems, which is exactly what all this is about. That means building machines, right, with intelligence inside them to solve problems. It can be like your mobile phone, it can be like flight avionics systems, it can be drones, it can be robots, it can be whatever, right? But the interesting thing is that this is a very, very uh, challenging engineering space because it's, number one, it's multidisciplinary. Okay. Number two is that uh, multidisciplinary means that, that lots of things have to be optimized at the same time in order to get a solution. Like, for instance, um, uh, if you, if you uh, like, say, an iPad, okay, Steve Jobs, when he came up with the idea for an I iPad, he just didn't tell his engineer, Mirko, iPad bana ke do. Right? And they came up with the iPad. The process of arriving at the iPad would have been, he gave the overall envelope of the design. That means I want something like a book, which I can hold in my hand, which is not too small. It's not like a phone. At the same time, it's not like an A4 sheet, but something in which I can read stuff. Right? And I want battery life, which will last me at least a day, if not two days. And I should be able to, uh, you know, read like in a book. That means the graphics has to be very fast. And the animation has to be very fast. Okay. Now, if you look looked at the processors of that time, no processor could have uh, have delivered the kind of capability that their iPad wanted. So they had to build their own chip. Okay. So do you know how much it costs to build an Apple chip from the tooling to manufacturing? Just the tooling for an Apple uh, A series chip, which is there in the iPhone and iPad and all that. Huh? Listening. Okay, I found this on the web for is Jupiter. Yeah. How much does it cost to tool to build a chip, an A series chip? Are yaar, you are allowed to be wrong, man. <laughs> you can volunteer an answer. We don't expect you to be Gyanis, okay? But your question will reflect a question in many other people's minds. That's why your question is important. That's if you're brave enough to, uh, to ask it or answer the question. Japanese, we can't see you. Sir, it can be like uh, 32, uh, 20 dollars, something like that. What uh, about echo? Yeah, yeah. What about echo coming from your machine? Yeah, no, no, I'm saying how much does it cost Apple to build a facility, right, to, 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 to design a new chip, to make everything ready for it? So that requires a lot of research at the first place. And uh, uh, I guess uh, from my point of view, uh, like whatever I learned from Nat Geo and all, you have to get a fully uh, vacuumized, uh, clean environment to build. Uh, silicon chip center and, and the research behind it and all. What's up? I'm saying that to design the chip, right? You have the facility, you go to the manufacturer and say, Ye mera chip design lo ye bana do abhi. Right? To design the chip. Anyway, I'll tell you the answer. It's a few billion dollars. Right? So to design a chip of that 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 complexity which is they use nowadays about five nanometer technology 
right each 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 mask on the chip right which the, the lithography mask with which you expose the chip uh, the silicon costs about uh, 50 to $60,000 because it's very high resolution technology is quite expensive and so on so basically the tooling for apple if, if it wants to decide to build a new chip because uh, it it costs around that much there's a lot of complexity on that chip just imagine the design complexity of that chip usually they use technology which has so what they do is that they take technology that they've been working on in the past and integrate it to make this uh, chip and all that but it's it's pretty expensive so that gives you an idea of of uh, what what uh, other kind of costs which go into um, chip design but anyway i've digressed i was talking to you about embedded systems so embedded systems are how to devise machines with intelligence in them a digression was this chip design thing it used to cost billions of dollars in the past to build this kind of chip but you can do a lot of cool stuff in less high resolution technology right and uh, if you use not 5 nanometer if you, if you use 100 and nanometer 180 nanometer uh, technology and we have the fabs in india you can bring down the cost a hell of a lot you can bring it down to about from 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 uh, billions to about tens of thousands of dollars because this is legacy technology and all that and there's a lot of stuff that you can do with uh, 180 nanometer uh, technology but if we even use this kind of technology what's really lacking in industry is the people to do this kind of chip designing okay do you know how many microelectronics engineers india turns out every year uh, who can who are capable of doing chip design तुमने सोचा नहीं है अरे यार पाइथन पढ़ा दो मेरे को कॉग्निजन में नौकरी दिलवा दो मैं खुश रहूंगा राइट ओके सो यू कम टू द राइट प्लेस दैट्स व्हाट आई वांटेड टू से ई यंत्र हैज गॉट अ नंबर ऑफ वर्टिकल्स इन इट वन इज द डोमेन्स दैट वी आर लुकिंग एट वन इज एग्रीकल्चर वी आर ट्राइंग टू बिल्ड अ लॉट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर एग्रीकल्चर वी आर लुकिंग एट स्मार्ट सिटीज राइट आई ओ टी टेक्नोलॉजीज फॉर मेकिंग सिटीज एंड फैक्ट्रीज एंड इंस्टोलेशन स्मार्ट एंड द थर्ड इज चिप डिजाइन एंड फॉर चिप डिजाइन वी एक्चुअली टीच यू चिप डिजाइन इन आर ई यंत्र कॉम्पिटिशन थीम्स लाइक वन ऑफ द थीम्स इन द competition for the last 2 3 years has been to program an fpga now how many guys have encountered fpgas here field programmable gate arrays hey the electronics guys well, i have not encountered it but have like uh, i have been exposed to it like i have seen some videos and got like okay so what we do in eyantra is that we train you in the skills which are required for chip design that means we train you in things like verilog Uh, VHDL and stuff like that. We train you in these skills, and we also, if you come, if you are shortlisted in the competition and you come towards the finals, those kind of teams are actually given FPGA development boards by us at our cost. You are loaned th- these uh, boards to actually do the programming, and we are delighted to see how many students have mastered this kind of uh, technology. So anyway, let me not go on for too long. Uh, uh today's uh, session is open uh, cv but uh, before i leave now i'll just share one more thought with you what yantra is all about is uh, you know that it's taken india about 60 years to become a trillion dollar economy you know how much a trillion dollars is right how many billions is that A trillion dollars, thousand billion, right? It's taken us sixty years from the time of independence, nineteen forty-seven to two thousand and seven. Sat saal lagay, and when you are a one trillion dollar economy, then the world wakes up and wants to sell you stuff. It wants to sell you its foreign cars, and you start opening malls, and your children start ordering food on Swiggy because you have more money in your pocket, right? You start buying fancy houses and all that kind of stuff. That happened in two thousand and seven. Okay. How long do you guys feel it will take for India to become twice as wealthy? Five more years, Max. Five more years from now? 
at maximum because they are predicted around 2024 or something they real okay so this is the first thing i asked guys in my embedded systems class the answer was it took it took us 7 years in 2014 we had reached 2 billion dollars and it took us 3 4 more years now we are almost at 3 billion dollars uh, and in 2025 will be about 5 billion dollars uh, so what kind of curve is this exponentially increasing exponential curve right so exponential means that uh, the last people to ask for a career advice is who older people especially your parents <laughs> okay because older people like us have encountered linear growth most of our lives okay and this exponential growth has been very recent for us and we are not equipped to deal with it because exponential growth means that what used to work in the past will not work in the future right and and this growth of affluence that happens transforms the behavior of of people in the past they would never have bought a washing machine khud hi do lenge nowadays washing machine is compulsory dishwashers are compulsory right maids who used to be available in the past are becoming less available in fact to a wife to a lady the maid is more important than the family or the husband because if the maid doesn't come things go topsy turvy so to protect our ladies <laughs> who are at home we have to build more and more automation so this is only to say that you are staying in very exciting times where things are changing very fast where where the past is no prediction about the future and to sustain this exponential economic growth right we need to build a lot of automation and the advantage with india is that our population is very young half the population is below the age of 25 so is guys like you who has to build the technology which will sustain this economy but to my knowledge we are not training you properly to build the kind of machines that we require we are training you to pass exams <laughs> and then come out pretty much useless <laughs> there are software company has to come and train you up for one year and then deploys you in doing lots of godagiri work and stuff like that okay and very few have the courage to do startups because startups uh, involve risk and uh, and our parents are very risk averse they will say nahi nahi a bank ki naukri le lo ias karo wagera wagera and not realizing that that the world in future is going to be very very different so we are here as yantra to help prepare you guys for the future through our various initiatives more important than just teaching you technology we need to prepare you for an attitude and an approach to life being more atmanirbhar in training self learning you know all these kind of skills and uh, today is just a taster of the kind of stuff that you will learn in the competition so our competition lasts about 6 months it is a challenging competition but anybody who's taken part in the competition believes that they've learned more in the 6 months than they have in the 4 years of their college okay and to just give you a little taster of the sorts of things that we teach in the competition uh, we have my colleague here abhinav sarkar uh, who is at the moment taken a break from running the internship program that we have we have got about 95 interns a third of them are at iit and two thirds are outside and uh, he's been working frenetically burning the midnight oil preparing a presentation for you um so abhinav without much ado i'll hand the floor over to you in case you guys want to ask ask me any uh, questions you can do it now or if you want to be put on the mailing list you can write to uh, support at e-yantra.org but if there are no questions i shall bow out and uh, hand the floor over to abhinav abhinav Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. So good. Uh, good morning, everyone. So my name is Abhinav. Uh, I am a senior project technical assistant at uh, uh, 
uh, Ian Thra. So today we'll be starting with this uh, session of uh, Open CV and Computer Vision. Okay. Uh, so this uh, today is just a taster, just a brief introduction to these uh, what these terms mean and just showing. So let me first tell you about what this session is going to be about. Firstly, it is about getting you acquainted with some basic concepts related to image processing. We will be using the OpenCV library which uses uh, using Python and uh, using that library we will be using some basic uh, image processing operations and we will learn how to perform operations. Uh, for those who are wondering, OpenCV is Open Computer Vision. It's the Basically, this, it's the standard library that everyone uses uh, whenever they have to they have related to computer vision. Uh, then we will be demonstration, demonstrating few applications related to image processing. What this session is not about. So let's talk about that as well. So for, for first of all, we are not going to be explaining the mathematics of the algorithms. I think there is some uh, uh, echo somewhere. I think uh, somebody can they uh, mute their mic. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is better. Yeah. So we are not going to be explaining any of the algorithms. Uh, uh, the mathematics behind the computer vision or image processing algorithms. We will not be learning about machine learning or deep learning or, or all those things because that is not the focus of the sessions. This is the focus of the session. Okay. So there are a couple of prerequisites for this session. Firstly, I am assuming that uh, whoever is uh, attending this, they should be familiar with basic Python syntax. They should be able to use if statements, for loop, something. So I am assuming that you are familiar with that. Since uh, we are of the, uh, limited on time, so I won't be able to give you a primer on Python itself. And also there is another library called numerical Python library, which is heavily used by uh, OpenCV. So that if you ha are familiar with that, that is good enough. If not, that is also fine. The second thing is that uh, if you are want to, if you are going to be following through and attempt, uh, attempting whatever is done in the workshop, then uh, make sure that you have uh, installed all the software. Uh, we have already share. I have already shared a uh, document related to software installation beforehand. Before the session, you might have received that. Yeah. And lastly, you need a little bit of mathematics. Basically, addition, subtraction, linear algebra, just a basic, not, uh, not a lot, but a little bit of math. Okay. And uh, one more note uh, before we move on to the agenda. So, I... I will be talking in English, but uh, I have uh, this involuntary habit of somewhat switching in uh, Hindi sometimes. So if you don't understand, then please uh, 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 please tell me at that point only. I will explain in English. Okay. So first, the agenda is going to be what is image processing and computer vision. Then we will be moving on to getting started with OpenCV, that is, we'll be working on the, we'll be looking at the code that is uh, used and written uh, in OpenCV. And then we will be working with two demos, that is object detection, and the second demo is building an in invisible, invisibility cloak. So that's kind of a Harry Potter inspired demo. That. Before we move on to image processing and computer vision, so first, a little bit of theory, because theory is important, everybody knows that. So, what is an image? So, think about a human eye, firstly. What does a human eye do? A human eye, basically, whenever we are looking at something, a human eye has one lens, which is, what, what it does is that it collects the, uh, collects the light from... Uh, from the external sources 
and that light is then focused into our retina. The retina is basically just a screen at the back of your eye in which the, that light gets uh, that light gets focused. So any image that you are anything that you are looking at, the image of that gets created uh, formed on the retina. And another thing is that the retina is dotted with cell sensors. There are conical cell. There are various kinds of sense uh, sensory nodes or nerves which are uh, uh, which are on the retina, which basically sense what information is being uh, captured by the uh, by your eye. Okay, and this is then transmitted to to the brain, and that gets converted into. Uh, that gets converted into information, which is uh, interpreted by your uh, brain. Okay, so this is how a basic eye works. Why I'm explaining the eye is because uh, a camera, a simple camera, if we talk about it, it used to, it is basically a low tech eye. So this is also simple. There's a lens and there's a film which records the image. This, uh, this I'm talking about older cameras which uh, we used to have, like the the Kodak ones. I'm not sure how many of you are nineties. There's also modern digital cameras. They are a little bit complicated, but the general idea is same. So there's a lens which focuses all the all that information, and there is also uh, uh, and there is also a kind of a film. But in the in digital cameras, it's basically a sensor. So it is a photo sensitive sensor or something. And there, there are there is an image processing engine which records all the information that is taken in by the uh, by the camera, and after that, it stores that into the storage device. So let's say in a digital camera, it would be a memory card or the inbuilt memory or something. So it converts that image that image into a digital format into a for, uh, format that is easily understood. By the computer, so that digital format is what we call an image. Uh, so everybody is following me till now. This is, I guess, very basic, but still, if you have any doubts, just uh, pinch on the chat. Okay. So next, in a very basic sense, we can call image is a matrix. So. आप सबने लाइक ऑल ऑफ यू मस्ट हैव रेड अबाउट इमेजेस इन योर रेड अबाउट मैट्रिस इन योर इलेवेंथ ट्वेल्थ क्लास देर वॉज अ होल चैप्टर रिलेटेड टू दैट मैट्रिक्स मल्टीप्लीकेशन मैट्रिक्स एडिशन एंड सम ऑफ यू माइट है ये हम क्यों पढ़ते हैं इसीलिए पढ़ते हैं बेसिकली एन इमेज इज रिप्रेजेंटेड एज अ मैट्रिक्स सो लेट से दिस इज माई इमेज दिस इज अ ग्रे स्केल इमेज and this uh, we if you take a very small part of that grayscale image so each of these is one cell or one pixel and each of this in the, all this information is represented as a number or something so let us say that on a normal grayscale spectrum there can be infinite shades of gray so it can vary from totally black to totally white but the uh, problem with computers is that they don't understand infinite they have a very limited memory in order to store this information into a computer we have to do a process which is called quantization quantization is nothing but cut that spectrum into small small pieces so we what we did is we cut that whole spectrum into 256 pieces and that all these pieces are uh, each of these represents one shade of gray so whatever image 
that we are storing in our memory every image every cell has this has one of these colors on the spectrum okay so similarly so before we move on to uh, rgb images we well, let's just re re uh, understand what are pixels so pixel is basically let us say i have an Im image which is uh, 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 i have an image which has the dimensions of m by n okay so that each pixel will have a value that is 0 to 255 which is basically represent this is 0 to 255 because uh, this value is represented in binary and each of these each value represents one particular shade that we talked about earlier so let's say that uh, 170 corresponds to this color 238 corresponds to a bit lighter color so 255 is fully black uh, fully white and 0 is fully black so each of these numbers represent one uh, represent one color in the grayscale spectrum similarly when we are talking about rgb so in a way what we can say that uh, uh, image is nothing it's just a two dimensional matrix okay similarly rgb images what are they they are three dimensional matrix because they in in addition to height and width there is also a third dimension which is channel so there are three channels are red green blue so all color images are represented in a in form of a 3d matrix so any questions till now uh okay so i guess uh, there are no questions i hope you guys are following if you find uh, if you feel that here so let me just ask you a question what would be the size of a grayscale image with dimensions of Say thirty-two cross thirty-two pixels, and size. When I say size, it means the memory that is required for this image. So you know that one pixel is represented by eight bits. So what would be the uh, memory required for uh, a thirty-two cross thirty-two pixel image? uh so somebody said 2048 bit uh, any other answers uh so somebody said 24 yeah so we have multiple answers here we have 8192 so i see a lot of answers here 1 byte 256 bytes 1024 bits 8192 bytes and so on okay so the answer is 1024 bytes or we can say 1 kilobyte that is because if every pixel is re is represented by one byte okay so that means if we have 32 cross 32 pixels that means We have one zero two four bytes or one kilobyte. So the same math applies to uh, same math applies to RGB images as well. The only difference is that for RGB images, every pixel requires three bytes, not one byte. Okay. So, but also there this uh. number needs to be taken with a grain of salt because if you look at uh, actual 32 cross 32 pixel uh, image in uh, in on your 
laptop or system so that would may be uh, that the size would be less than 1 kb because most uh, images these days uh, some kind of compression algorithm is used so that's just a technicality i need you need to make you aware so now we come to the main what is the what is image processing and what is computer vision so any answers to this what do you guys think computer or in your robots to recognize that image yeah so one more thing is uh, uh do not google answers please like i don't want you guys to google answers try to make an educated guess what do you think image processing is what do you think computer vision is usually uh -huh. we you these like i use this meme because these terms are used interchangeably people don't know what is image processing what is computer vision i guess uh, image processing is just a part of computer vision and computer vision is like a whole part of like getting stuff like understanding stuff from an image and image processing is the process we do to get that stuff for computer vision uh, i guess that's what my understanding is so i think japneet also said image processing is important to make images for computer vision so yeah partially you are correct in that regard so image processing as many of you said some image processing is just one subset of computer vision okay that is that a com computer vision consists of many many things so there is mathematics involved there is physics involved there is pattern recognition signal processing and we can also say that image processing is also a part of signal processing a subset of signal processing in mathematics we also artificial intelligence and all so today's uh, if we talk about self driving cars today so they are in, uh, they are applying some high level computer vision algorithms for detecting lanes detecting other cars and stuff like that okay so the basic difference would be that computer vision requires a high level understanding so if, let's say i want to detect faces and if i want to detect something like i want to track an object in a image or a video so that is a high level task image processing requires uh, relates to slightly lower level so detecting edges detecting boundaries of a shape detecting let's say let's say detecting the corners in a image detect removing the noise so noise reduction so before i pass on to my high uh, pass on that image to high level algorithms i need to remove all the noise from that so we will uh, we see what noisy images look like uh, when we get to coding but this is what is the basic difference computer vision is a high level process image processing is comparatively low level processing which prepares an image for getting insight out of it so now let's just move on to the coding okay so the first part of this uh, whole session this first part would be basic image processing operations okay So the basic image processing operations that uh, we would firstly be work, uh, looking into is uh, loading, displaying, saving images. So if you have used uh, OpenCV at some point, then you will all already be uh, familiar with these. 
if not some of you might be starting out so that is why this is important to explain there are other image uh, there are other operations such as resizing and rotation so for example uh, we might want to resize some image or we might want to rotate some image and the third thing would be drawing functions so this is also an important thing because sometimes we want to add some information into an image like say we want to draw some shapes or something like that so for that there are some basic uh, some basic functions like uh, drawing lines rectangles circles there are more than this as well but uh, we'll just uh, we'll just talk about the basics you can uh, you can also refer the documentation for uh, the the open cv documentation for or other drawing functions first Skip the presentation. Okay. So I'll open my Jupyter notebook first. Okay, fine. So now this uh, screen is visible to everybody. I hope. Okay. Yeah. So first of all, let's talk about the basic. operations that is loading an image so i hope that you guys have installed jupyter notebook this is actually a very useful uh, thing uh, useful tool for teaching or even learning stuff the first thing we do at any when whenever we write any code any python code is uh, some of you might be familiar with this import libraries if i don't if i, I need to run this cell this because i want to import my the numpy library and the open cv library these are this these two are the most important things second thing is okay so next we'll move on the next cell uh, deals with i am read that is reading an image or loading an image okay so let's say that i have this particular image this is the open cv 4.1 logo that i have okay so in order to load an image i need to run this command cv2 im read and i need to specify the file path of this image so here this is the name of this image i don't need to specify the full file path because uh, this is in the same folder as this so if i run this you see that i have i get an output here this is class numpy nd array so i have what i have done is that i have printed the type of the image so in python what you can do is that using this type function you can find out what kind of data type any object or an uh, anything is so let's say you want to find if this uh, object is a string or any any other data type you can use this type function so here i see that this uh, image that is being returned here this image is actually a numpy array okay so this is very important when uh, important to understand because uh, when i talk when i deal with open cv i am dealing with numpy arrays numpy as i explained earlier is numerical python so all those matrix mat matrices matrix multiplications and all those that i talked about earlier all this is done to numpy arrays the basic representation is a numpy array i can also try printing this thing so you see what uh, when i print this what do i get you see this is uh, nothing but a mat this is nothing but a matrix okay so next what we want to do is we want to show this image okay so for that we have this function uh, called cv2 im show okay so this is also very simple we have something called a window name so this string is called a window name and this is the actual image so the image that is uh, being returned by cv2 im read that is being displayed here after that 
these are there are two more functions i'll uh, explain what these two functions do so first let me try running this piece of code uh so is my is the window open cv wind uh, the extra window visible to everybody there's an extra window that has spawned no no sir it's not visible right i think there is uh, i then uh, i need to stop sharing we share again just give me a moment yeah is this visible now yes yes sir, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah yeah okay fine so now let's uh, let's see so firstly cv2 i am show so so this string that is uh, that the first string is referring to this window name so whenever an extra window is spawned this window name is what we specify here in i am show second thing that is uh, shown here is the the second function is wait key so wait key is basically waiting for a key and here you will see that there is a number zero means that it will infinitely wait for any key press unless and until i uh, unless and until it will infinitely wait for any key press so let you will see that this window is not dis disappearing okay once i press some key this window disappears and that disappears because i have called cv2 destroy all windows let us say that i type a number here 1000 or 2000 okay and i try running this again so you see to our uh, if i type 2000 that means 2 seconds this is in milli this number is in milliseconds so 2000 means that that window will spawn for 2 seconds then it will be destroyed okay so everybody following me till now yes sir okay fine so next we move on to how to check the dimensions of so as i said a uh, image is nothing but a numpy array so we can use a basic uh, numpy notation for checking the dimensions of this function of this uh, image variable so you see that this image this image has the dimensions 243 comma 207 comma 3 so what is uh, i'll open the, this image uh, in a window side side by side yeah this uh, image is visible yes sir yeah so now tell me what is this 243 what is this 207 and what is this 3 243 is the height 207 is the breadth and 3 is the channel and yeah correct so 3 means the number of channels that are inside this so You, as i said a color image would have three channels correct so that means that this uh, image uh, so 243 is height so you can clearly see that the this is uh, this is the height and 207 as uh, she said is uh, the width okay now there is another way to load this image that is to load in grayscale let's say that i want to load this image in uh, instead of a, as a color image i want to load it as grayscale there are many reasons i would want to do that i may want to apply some processing on that image or i might i might want to do some uh, i want to do some thresholding on that image so there can be many reasons in order to convert it into gray 
what i just need to do is that in the im read i need to add one additional uh, uh, argument and that argument is zero okay and let's try running this piece of code and check what is the output here okay so you see that we have this gray, exact same image but only difference is this this is in gray scale the dimensions what are the dimensions here 243,207 so what uh, why why is, uh, is there only two dimensions here so there's no rgb there's only the gray scale yeah so you will see that there's only gray scale if i'm if i'm uh, hovering my mouse here you will see that uh, with the x to y value it is also showing the color the value the intensity of this uh, of this so you see that this uh, this color is 76 so that is a darker shade this one is 150 and this one is 29 and this i think these uh, things are pure black okay so let's say that i want to save this image okay so for saving there is a, another uh, uh, there is another function for cv2 i am right for saving what, what we have to do is very simple we have to specify the png uh part the part of that the name that we want to give so i want to give open cv logo dot gray dot png okay and this is the image so the image that i am reading in gray scale i want to give the i am passing this as the second argument so when i do that so this uh, function just returns true that means it has been successful but you see that uh, my image has been saved here so this is a save so this is a uh, get uh, this has been saved here okay this is the same image that we were seeing earlier okay so next we move on to accessing individual pixels in an image so let's see that let's say that i want to access one particular pixel uh, in this image uh open cv logo or open cv gray i want to say i want to select the, the i want to access the value somewhere here that is approximately 120 cross 120 okay so for that i'll i know this is basic this is not even open cv this is basic matrix operations what i'll have to do is in for that image uh, numpy array i will just specify that these are the coordinates which i want to select and print the pixel color here so you will see that uh, for the pixel color this is 29 29 as we saw earlier and uh, in case of rgb image when i am considering rgb image that uh, means that 255 1,1 so what does this 255 mean here what does this 1 and 1 mean rgb so what does this 255 represent which color does it represent it represents white very white sir it represents white or uh, anybody else uh so uh, red is red black uh so actually this uh, color represents blue so if we talk about uh, open cv this will be clear in the next uh, in in the uh in the next uh, cell when we run the next cell but if we talk about this open cv logo 120 cross 120 would be a pixel around here okay approximately in this uh, area so 
this color is clearly this color is blue what this pixel representation is done open cv basically represents rgb pixels as blue green r so the value of the blue channel would be 255 the value of the uh, value of the green channel would be 1 the value of the red channel would be 1 okay so whatever color you are seeing there is a mixture of three colors so if i talk about this in an rgb image if i talk about white color white color uh, is uh, you guys might have matlab uh, physics mein padha hoga white is mixture of all colors so white would be uh, white would be all three colors at all three channels at 255 255,0 255 255 255 okay if there is only one color at 255 that means that color is dominating so that is the rgb color space uh, model that uh, that is here so anybody have trouble understanding this so if you have any doubts please ask ओके, सो ये थोड़ा क्लियर नेक्स्ट उसमें भी हो जाएगा लेट से आई रन दिस सो इट्स वेरी माई न्यू सो आई जूम दिस बिट बट यू सी दैट वेन आई रैन दिस कम रैन दिस लाइन वॉट आई डिड वॉज आई असाइन दिस वैल्यू टू दिस पिक्सल So I assigned 255 comma 255 comma 255 to this particular pixel, the pixel I was checking earlier. So since this is uh, this value has changed, so you can see that the representation has also changed here. So this is this pixel has become white now. So this way I can do a lot of things. I can change parts of an image. I can do various kinds of things using uh, using just accessing particular parts uh yeah so i think uh, the need of why red red and green are one and one okay so every channel individually so if i talk about an rgb image every channel is represented with a value between 0 to 255 okay so when i talk about if the if the value is 0 that means that that color is not present absence of that color so you see that in this uh, image in in this particular uh, if i talk about this particular pixel i particu uh, in this particular you see that the red value is 1 the green value is 1 the blue value is 255 because there this uh, this these pixels are predominantly blue there is very very like a little red or green tone in here okay similarly if you look at this uh, area you see that the green value is 255 the red value is 1 the blue value is 1 okay similarly here in this area you see that uh, the r is 255 now we look at this uh, the text that is written so you see that both these values are very, all three values are very less 555 which are very close to zero that is why this area appears black this is not true black but this appears black and if i talk about the background so the background is full 255 255 255 is that clear why why this re numerical representation this is how just the, this is just how the computer understands what these colors are actually is there is this clear yes sir yeah okay so let's move on to the next so this we talked about accessing one particular pixel Let's talk about modifying a whole sec section of an image. 
So let's say that I want to modify a square area of uh, 25 pixel by 25 pixel. So this uh, we use something called uh, something called the uh, array slicing. So this is uh, this is a Python term and not an OpenCV term. So basically, what I'm specifying here is that from this pixel to this pixel, from this pixel to this pixel, and all three channels, I want to set all these values to zero, 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 zero. So what happens when I run this? See that one small cube, a uh, small black square has appeared. So here, all these values are zero. So you'll see that the pixel values are. 23 comma 23 so bit, the, the pixel values are all z between 0 comma 20 uh, 0 comma 25 for both x and y okay i could also maybe change just one channel so for that maybe i can say that i'll just change the first channel of this and run this code again Yeah, so I guess uh, there would be some error here. So for if I am specifying just one channel, then I need to specify only just one number, not three numbers here. Some okay. Let me just uh, start my shell again. Just give me a second and I just need to restart this. Okay, fine. So let's talk about cropping an image using array slicing. So let us say that I want to crop my open cv logo i don't want to show this uh, thing written in in the uh, below okay i just want this logo to be shown so for now what we have to do is we use the same process we store the array this part of the array into another variable called image prop and we just display that so you see that uh, this image, the dimensions are 204 to 204, correct? And this part is uh, kind of crop. It's not perfectly cropped, but it's kind of crop. okay? So we can also try checking out the individual channels. While we are looking at uh, channels, we can ch try checking out the individual channels for each. So let's say that I want to... Uh, okay. So as I was explaining earlier, this is our open CV. 
logo. Okay, this is our B channel. This is our G channel. This is our R channel. So, can anybody explain why certain parts of this image are missing here? Anyone? So the different channels are like uh, where the blue channel, where the blue part is not there, there's all black and where it's there, it's white. Maybe that's similarly in the red and green channel also, where there's the red color, it's all white, where there's no red or the minimum red, it's more of a black shade. So think about it that an RGB image is a as we uh, said, it is a three-dimensional image, three-dimensional matrix. So that can all we can also say that it is three images, which are uh, two di uh, three two-dimensional images. So this is let's say the the image that represents the B channel. So here you see that, that uh, in this area where this is blue, all the this value is two fifty-five. But this value is uh, one for uh, other, uh, for the other two channels. So that is why these, uh, uh, here this is missing because uh, 255 in grayscale image basically just represents white. Okay. Similarly, here you see this value is one, but in uh, the R channel, this value is 255. So when all these three channels combined, they give us this image. So that is why this is a, uh, this is the, uh, that is why that particular figure makes sense. Because there are three channels, that, that is technically three different images. We are just looking at uh, these images in a binary form. So, so is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So I think uh, we are done with the very basic operations that are related to OpenCV. Now let's move on to something more interesting. So this is uh, basically resizing an image or uh, rotating an image. So basically, two. Uh, I'm going to be in the, uh, introducing two more functions. That is resizing and Reload uh, and re rotating. Okay. Firstly, let's just run uh, the import statement and see what our image is. You see that uh, this is a very large image that I have. Okay. I'm. I want to. Since this is this is a very large image, I am not able to fit this into the screen or look at this image in its entirety. So what I want to do is, let's say I want to decrease the, so you, uh, here you can also check the dimensions. This is a 2624, 1920, 3. This is a very big image. So what we need to do is, we need to resize this. So for resizing, let's just, for one thing, let's set the width as 500 pixels. So for firstly, we uh, let's just set the width. So this cv2 dot resize, this takes three arguments. So first argument is the image, that is the image that uh, we have read here. The second argument is the width. And, uh, sorry, the second argument is the dimension. So you will see that this is a tuple. So this takes both the width and the height. So the height is same as what what it was earlier. That is two six two four pixels. But the width I have changed to five hundred pixels. The third is the interpolation. So the interpolation is basically some uh, uh, this is uh, some terminology that uh, that is used in OpenCV. There are some particular mode that every function works in. Okay, so if I Let's say I just uh, Google 
Yes. So I'll get the documentation. Open CV documentation. So in the documentation, you everything is uh, written. That what exactly do these uh, term terms mean? So, for example, uh, these terms exact. I'm I, as I said, I will not be going into the my uh, mathematics. So these terms basically represent some uh, particular mathematical formula that is getting applied. So in general, what you need to know is that for some uh, operation, some particular uh, technique, uh, one particular interpolation method is preferred. So let's say if I want to enlarge an image, then a particular uh, interpolation method would be used. Okay. So let's try running this piece of the piece of code. Okay, so you can see that I have that the image is shrunk, uh, like the image width has reduced. So everybody is able to see this, right? Okay. So the width has reduced, but the length is still the same. So the length is two six two four only. Only the width has reduced. So now let's try doing the opposite. Now let's also change the height. So the height we change it to five zero zero and again run the cv two dot resize image command. So let's see what happens now. So the width and the height both have reduced now since both have been set as five hundred. So, does anybody see anything off with uh, anything wrong with this image? What do you guys think? So the Hello? aspect ratio is not correct. Yeah, so aspect ratio is not. So you'll see that this image looks very squished if you. If you think, because uh, if uh, we talk about the earlier, the dimensions were uh, were very different. The width and the height were different, but here we set both the width and the height as same. So this image has become very squished. So another way to uh, way around that is preserving the aspect to preserve this aspect ratio is to make sure that the width and the height are scaled in the same ratio. So let's say that am I? I want to scale this image to uh, this. I want to set the scale factor as zero point two. That means the image should be twenty percent of the actual size. So what I would do is that I would, uh, I would multiply the width and the height both by scale, this particular uh, scale factor zero point two. And then I would resize that image accordingly. So I'm also converting this into int because uh, this, uh, if I let's say multiply these two terms, it might turn out to be a decimal. So I want to convert it into int since uh, the image dimensions can all only be uh, integer. They cannot. They can never be uh, float or decimal. So let's try running, and then I. Use the same resize command. If I try running this, you see that right, and now this is uh, uh, this is in proper ratio as earlier. Okay. I can also try changing this uh, this by just uh, running this again. If I use uh, zero point three, you see that the uh, the image has resized. It is uh, bigger now. So any problem in understanding this part? Guys, if you uh, if you have any problem, uh, just tell me. I'll uh, I can explain this part. If you have uh, you are uh, finding any problem. Yes. Yeah, so how many of you guys are 
अंडरस्टैंडिंग एवरीथिंग जस्ट ट्राई रेजिंग योर हैंड आई लज्यूम जो लोग रेज नहीं कर रहे वो सो गए किसी लाइक दे जस्ट स्नूज ऑफ सम पॉइंट ओके गुड सो सम पीपल आर पेइंग अटेंशन बट आई थिंक मेनी पीपल हैव जस्ट आर टेकिंग अ नैप ओके तो आई गेस इफ पीपल सम ऑफ देम आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग वी कैन मूव ऑन सो लेट्स सी सो नेक्स्ट वुड बी रोटेटिंग एन इमेज an image rotation is a slightly different uh, slightly different operation than because there is no one function that does that okay so an image rotation uh, in order to rotate an image what we need to do is that we need to get a rotation matrix for an image okay what exactly is a rotation matrix here Think about this way, and in image is just a regular matrix. It's just a m cross n matrix. Now I want to rotate it by a certain angle. Let's say forty five degree or something. So in order to rotate it, there is a particular transformation called a ro uh, ro rotational transform. So for uh, in order to rotate it, I need to Consider this particular mat uh, matrix that is the rotation matrix, the two D rotation matrix. That is cos theta, sin theta, minus sin theta, cos theta. These values will change based on the num uh, based on the theta value that I am give uh, giving here. So if uh, uh, yeah, so Ishan, what particular uh, part do you want me to repeat? Yeah, maintaining the aspect ratio one. Okay, so I'll just uh, I'll just go back to that once. Okay, so maintaining aspect ratio, there is only one. What we need to do is that let's say that I'm reading this image. I'm I'm getting the height and the width of that image. What I need to do is I multiply that height and width with the scale factor. So my scale factor here is zero point three. हाँ या हिंदी में तो मतलब कि अगर मुझे स्केल फैक्टर कुछ जीरो पॉइंट थ्री रखना है कि मुझे एक इमेज है उसका और मतलब जीरो पॉइंट थ्री टाइम्स उसको करना है सो उसका जो वेट और हाइट है उसको मैंने उसको मैंने मल्टीप्लाई कर दिया एंड देन उसके बाद यही फंक्शन सेम यूज किया रिसाइज विद द विद द न्यू वेट एंड हाइट using that i simply have to call this function and the width and height changes so basically wo hi hai ha so what i was talking about is rotating an image yeah so for rotating an image what i'm i will not be getting into the hardcore mathematics of this again because uh, wo like वो एक्सप्लेन करने में बहुत टाइम लग जाएगा बट द आइडिया इज दैट वंस वी गेट अ रोटेशन मैट्रिक्स दैट रोटेशन मैट्रिक्स इज बेस्ड ऑन व्हाट इज द सेंटर ऑफ रोटेशन लेट्स आई वांट टू रोटेट दैट इमेज मतलब इफ आई वांट टू रोटेट दैट इमेज अराउंड द सेंटर और इफ आई वांट टू रोटेट दैट इमेज एट वन पर्टिकुलर पिक्सल अराउंड वन पर्टिकुलर पिक्सल ओके देन i need to uh, i need to specify the center of rotation the next thing is the angle of rotation the angle of rotation would be what angle i want to rotate my 
रोटेट द इमेज बाय The third is the scaling factor. So here also we have a scaling factor. We can scale up and down the image, but by when we are rotating, we might want to keep it zero as as it is. So let's try. So let's look at our image first. Yeah. So this is a, this is my image. So let's try rotating uh, rotating this. So before uh, rotate uh, rotating this, let we we can also look at the rotation matrix. So I have chosen the angle of rotation as forty five degrees. Okay, center of rotation. This is uh, width by two, height by two. What does this mean? Where is the center of rotation? At the exact center of the image. Yeah, exact center. And I have a scale factor of one, so the size does not is not going to change. So I can try printing out the rotation matrix here as well. So that rotation matrix is uh, as as you can see, this is some uh, this is a value, okay. And I uh, and. i am also getting the after the getting the rotate rotational matrix i am also applying that rotation onto that uh, actual image so for that i am using this warp affine function so this is actually called an affine transformation so i won't go into the details because this is highly mathematical but uh, as i said the image the m uh, and it takes the rotational matrix And the width and the height of the image. So you also see that some parts of the image get cut off here. So you see that these parts are getting cut. So that is kind of a, a unfortunate, uh, unfortunate uh, byproduct of this because what happens is that when it's when it, get, it tries to rotate that image it assumes that these parts would be blank or 0, 0 the algorithm assumes that this these parts would be considered blank or 0, 0,0,0 it does not know what in information should i put here so that is why it is considered zero then also see since i deliberately chose a Fully circular image. That is why this image is not getting affected in a way. But if I let's say increase the scale factor here to one point five, so increasing the scale factor, this actually rotates the image, but this also cuts the image to some extent. This is because the uh, algorithm is trying to fit fit a larger image into a smaller image size. So some parts of the image get cut. i can also try changing the center of rotation so let's say i this image is i guess uh, uh this image is uh, 300 comma 300 i think so let's say i set the center of rotate rotation at 100 comma 100 you see that this looks from pretty different from what it was because the center of rotation has changed okay so any problem in understanding so far are you guys following yes sir yeah if you have any doubts uh, still uh, as i said i said the uh, post in the chat I'll wait. I'll wait just for a minute before I move on. Okay. So let let's move on to the next part, which is drawing functions. So I'll just quickly move on to, uh, through this because uh, this part was a bit tough, but this is uh, very easy. 
can you please explain uh, what warp find does uh, actually no because warp find is uh, something it's a basically it's a mathematical transform which uh, so uh, which it's a mathematical transform which uh, basically rotates that image to a, based on the rotation matrix that is given so i cannot exactly explain to you because we don't have time for that so do we have hands on part so it's not actually hands on because uh, since i'm uh, i'm showing you if you guys have installed the software you can follow on on your own system as well uh, but i can also do one thing i'll uh, like after the session is over i'll share a github repo with you guys uh, from where you can access uh, access all this all these resources that i have created for this so for through that you can actually uh, try running this code yourself making playing around with it making changes to it yeah so moving on let's uh, move on, moving to the basic drawing functions so for now so first let's try start with creating a blank canvas of 500 so what yeah so what i did was that i created something like a blank canvas here that is a uh, basically a empty uh, the a numpy array which has these dimensions 500 comma 500 comma 3 and all the values in this uh, array are zeros so that means it is a completely black image you see that every all the pixels are black this is uh, just the ca uh, canvas that i am using for uh, testing out my code okay the first function would be draw a line so for draw a line i need four uh, parameters two parameters are the pixel coordinates of the end two end points of that line so that is uh, the first would be the first end point the second would be the second end point the third would be color so what is this color can somebody the re uh, reply on the chat red uh, so many people said some people had green so this is actually red uh, once again remember this is blue the first way, number uh, represent the first thing represents blue this is uh, green this is red okay the final thing is thickness thickness is uh, the thickness of the line so here we just uh, call this uh, function cv2.line and we uh, specify these uh, these arguments point 1 point 2 color and thickness so try if i try running this i'll get this image okay i could also try switching the color maybe this is not working again should be the value for white hello yeah did we want white color should be the value can you uh, talk a little bit uh, or you can post your query on chat it as well okay 
for white color what should be the value so for white color uh, can somebody answer this what should be the value for white color yeah very easy 255 comma 255 comma 255 in a single time can we present rgb code i am not sure what you are asking yeah so let's move on to the next part that is drawing a rectangle so here these uh, the if you see that the notation is more or less the same as the earlier the arguments are same point 1 point 2 color thickness the only difference is that point 1 represents what the top left corner point 2 represents the bottom right corner so you can see that uh, when i draw this this is point 1 200, 200 this is point 2 that is 300, 300 okay for a circle the notation would change a little bit for the circle there is uh, let's say there is only one point that we need to specify for a circle that is the center the second thing we need to specify is the radius how many pixels do we want the radius to be the third is the color and the fourth is the thickness color thickness you know you know all this So let's try this. So you see the circle, uh, the center of the circle is two fifty comma two fifty, and the radius is seventy. So seventy is approximately this much. Next. Okay. So let's try creating something fun. So what I have done here is that I have. Uh, drawn a bunch of lines. So what I did here was uh, these lines represent a particular shape. Okay, so I'll show you this. This is just a precursor to what uh, uh, what we'll be discussing in the last demo. So that is the invisibility cloak. So you see that uh, the circle uh, represents the, the circle is the center. So at the at the center we have the circle that is two fifty comma two fifty, and it has a radius of thirty, and uh, the color is green. So color is green in all green, and the thickness is three. The lines that we are giving. So the lines, these three lines represent the three corners. One ninety eight comma two eighty is uh, one corner. Then two uh, fifty comma one ninety is another, and uh, the third corner is three zero two comma two eighty. These are the three corners. The last line is the one that uh, that is the elder one, which represents the elder one. This is these are the points that are represented. Okay, so another thing is so the thing that we I also wanted to discuss is how to put text into the uh, into uh, into any image. So let's say that I want to append some in text into uh, into my image. Okay, so in that way, so for that we have the cv two dot put text function. So what it does is that we have to specify some uh, variables here. So the font we have to verify the uh, specify the font. We have to specify the color. We have to specify the font scale. So here we have the font scale of one. We have to specify the thickness, and lastly we have to specify the. We have to specify. Uh, we also have to specify the coordinates. So let's say hundred comma four hundred. So that is uh, approximately this this position. Not exactly. Yeah, hundred comma four hundred is the top uh, bottom left position. So any text starts from the bottom left. Is this clear?
yes so i hope uh, this was uh, clear to you guys so next we will move on to our uh, game module will be so next we will move on to the next module which is object detection so right now we just uh, worked on some very simple operations but now we uh, we will basically be moving on to object detection so for object detection what my aim is that i want to detect this cubic cube and specifically this color on this face this orange color okay for this there is uh, there are many methods to for object detection there are hard core image process there are image processing based methods or and there are also other methods we will be using a very simple the the most basic form of image processing that is filtering based on color this particular so that is why i chose this uh, particular object because this has a very bright color which is easily con which contrasts very easily from the background okay so while we, while i'm talking about uh, object detection so first let's talk about color spaces so as some of you were uh, trying to understand what does this red green blue mean so when we talk about uh, computers basically there are many ways to represent one color okay let's say i have and uh, i have red so there can be many ways i can code that in uh, code that into the computer's memory that the color uh, that the red color may be represented by 0,2 0,255 or it may be represented by some other method as well so the usual method that we usually use for uh, so all these methods are called color spaces different color spaces so there is there is uh, there is the rgb color space then there is the hsv color space the hue saturation value the difference between these uh, there are other color spaces as well there is hue saturation luminescence then there are uh, more uh, that uh that use some different uh, variable variables so the difference between these is that uh, the rgb as you can see that uh, this is kind of uh, if you look at the uh, if you look at the shape of this you will see that any color is uh, is a mixture of two colors okay so if i have to think about uh, yellow so yellow would this uh, yellow would probably be an addition of uh, red and green okay this is represented here as well but it is represented in a different way so in this hue saturation value method what happens is that every color particular color is represented on this uh, circle or this wheel and the saturation and value parameters define the brightness of the brightness of the color okay so let's say that all if you look at this particular column all blues all blue colors will reside in this column only the only difference would be the brightness of that blue so usually in color filter color filtering color based filtering if i want to use some uh, if i want to uh, do some color based filtering like i want to do in the case of this rubik's cube usually i would use the hsv color space instead of the rgb color space reason being that the hsv color space is different shades of the color fall in the same range it is much easier to threshold let's say that i just want to act, i want to allow a certain set of colors to 
uh, a certain range of colors let's say that uh, let's say that uh, i have a, i have a red object but it is not totally one kind of red it is slightly different kinds of red or the shade of red changes uh, based on the brightness brightness of the room okay so one shade of red might have uh, a value some value of something in uh, rgb range the second value might have something completely different uh, are you guys following what i am trying uh, what i am trying to say yes sir yeah so the idea is that all uh, basically hsv is the you this particular color space the hue saturation value this is much less sensitive to external light that is why we use this because uh, we want uh, we want to make sure that our uh, that our algorithm works in all all cases of light all condition light lighting conditions just not all, the only one okay so for example i have this image i want to isolate this apple okay so what i will do is that i will set some threshold which all in this so you will see that in, even in this apple there are different shades of red this this is not perfectly one shade but still it is very contrasting uh, from the background so i'll set the range of the uh, i so what is thresholding thresholding if when i talk about thresholding it's basically if something is between this threshold then allow it that is that these limits let's say that uh, the values uh, uh, okay so for example uh, the values should be between these ranges so i'll i'll explain to that uh, explain that to you in uh, by running some code actually So let's try this. this image is pretty big that is not uh, that is not good actually so let let me just do one thing this same uh, this is the same uh, resize image that i uh, Taught you. I am just. Uh, I just wrote it in form of a function. Still very big. Oh, this is not saved. 
Yeah, I guess this is my needle. So we have this track bar here and we have this image. So this uh, both these windows are visible to everyone, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is our uh, HSV. So I'm adjusting the values. Okay. If you uh, if you look at uh, look closely at this uh, this particular window, you will see that there are uh, in this each, uh, in the six track bar there is hue minimum, hue maximum, saturation minimum, saturation maximum. Value minimum, value maximum. Okay. So this would, let's say I set this to around 80, or maybe even uh, let's increase it slightly, 55, and uh, try increasing this to one, approximately 170. Okay, so this is our original image that we have. This is the HSV image, what the image would look look like in the HSV color space, if you will. So for converting that into HSV color space, we use this uh, one function called image uh, called CVT color. So this is basically used to transform color spaces. I can use this uh, particular function to change this uh, change this image into a, a grayscale image as well if I want. Or maybe I can, uh, so here what I am doing is that I am changing this to a, from a BGR that is an R, RGB image to an HSV based image, uh, to an HSV image. Okay. That is uh, represented on the uh, view saturation value. Okay. The next thing I am doing is that I am using uh, this in range function. So, this in range function, what it does is that here you see that I have specified some values here for what are the ranges that the view can vary between what are the saturation values that the uh, that this can vary. So for hue, I can have 0 to 40. Okay. Uh, for saturation, I can have uh, the range can be between 85 to 255. Similarly, for value, I can have the range between 171 to 255. Is this clear? Yes, sir. So yes, basically, sir. then, so basically, what I mean by thresholding, as a uh, Koshika asked, is that when these, uh, when the U saturation value will will fall between these three ranges. 0 to 40, 85 to 255, 171 to 255, then predominantly this orange color would be filtered out as you can see here. So this, uh, this thing I say is this is an act of creating a mask and a mask is basically some region of interest that I want to isolate. Okay, so for color filtering I need to specify some ranges and use a uh, use this function called cv2 dot in range and that way and that in range function so you see that here we have defined two variables lower and upper so for lower value it is uh, these human sat min val min so though these values are it is getting from here from this track bar that is uh, 0 85 and 171 for the upper values, it is getting from here, Q max, sat max, val max, so 40, 255, 255. 
so when i create a mask so the mask basically filters all the values between these upper and lower limits and all the pixels in these uh, in this range they will be given a value of white or one since this uh, this is a binary image and all the rest of the pixels will be given zero you see that all these values are all zero and here we have all these values are 255 or white pure white so is this clear yes sir okay yes Next, yes sir we move on step by step into the into the main code that is uh, that is uh, for our object detection okay so firstly let's uh, go to the go to this code okay since i did not have time to write all the code uh, i knew that i won't have time to write all the code i basically commented most of it i'll be explaining it as i go yeah so this is a uh, this is actually another uh, webcam that i have connected to my system so if i so you see that uh, firstly what i have done is with cv2 video capture one okay so this one number represents the web external webcam that i have connected if i would if i was using my uh, if i was using my lap, uh, my system webcam the one that is visible on webex so in that case uh, it would have been zero the inbuilt webcam it would ha would have been zero but uh, i cannot use the inbuilt webcam because i have to because uh, that is being used uh, that is being used by webex the second thing that i am doing here is that i am running a while loop an infinite while loop so i am hoping everybody knows what this means while loop that means that this loop will continue for infinity okay and after that i am calling this uh, calling this uh, command vid dot read so this dot read function is retrieving the image from the uh, from from the camera so this image is being retrieved so that image is stored in a numpy array called frame uh, stored in a variable called frame and then i am showing that image we can see that this window is uh, named frame and there is a i have written one piece of code so here since i am uh, capturing video i cannot uh, write uh, i cannot use zero here i am uh, can somebody uh, can, can somebody say why i cannot write zero and why i, I have written one anyone uh i guess there are no sir if we yeah sir, if we use one uh, if we use zero then the frame will stop on a single yes you are uh, you are right so basically if we are uh, if we are just typing zero that means that frame would in uh, will freeze at that but i want my frames to be updating continuously so every frame would uh, would uh, would get uh, closed after 1 millisecond so that means that there is no latency in this video okay and the second part is what i am doing is that i am uh, checking if i have pressed the button q so if i press q then i can exit out of this while loop if i don't press this q then uh, this while loop will not get exited so let's say i press q now this while loop get exited because i use the break statement 
so this gets ex- exited now let's take these two steps first so i i, I explained the image thresholding to you first what we do is that we convert the frame into an hsv image that is cvt color frame dgr to hsv okay after that what we do is we set the thresholds so we already have the thresholds so we set that uh, set those thresholds here 85 one uh, 85 to 176 sorry 0 to 40 85 to 255 176 to 255 this is what we did uh, uh, these are the numbers that we achieved earlier and then we create a mask so i showed this to you earlier as well this uh, we pass the hsv image and we pass the lower and upper bounds let's try displaying this mask then okay so you see that this uh, this is uh, right now this is uh, detecting so there is one thing that you see that it is also detecting yellow so that is because if you if uh, these ranges are very close so it will also detect yellow in the same ranges because uh, as i discussed earlier yellow is kind of a by product of a mixture of orange it will also to some extent it will also detect green no it's not detecting green that's yeah so it's detecting yellow and it's detecting orange so as it, so but okay so this is my mask that is getting created but you will also see that there is some noise in the background so you see that uh, there are these uh, white spots here here and there which i which i don't want actually if uh, if i change the position of my camera these spots will increase because uh, lighting tends to uh, tends to aggregate noise like this so what i'll do is the next step would be decreasing noise okay so removing noise so let's uh, move on to the slide first so two of the uh, two very basic techniques that we use for uh, de- removing noise in any image that is erosion and dilation what is erosion and dilation erosion is basically any it uh, it expands the boundary of these white areas so dilation would be expansion of these white areas and erosion would be decreasing of these white areas so it depends on the application that we are doing some in some cases we might want to increase the increase these boundaries some cases we might want to decrease these boundaries it depends on uh, what application so here since we have some stray noise here we, what we want is we want to decrease this uh, external uh, noise so you see that right uh, now there is significantly less noise than earlier there is still slight a bit but it's not that much okay so what we have done is that uh, we have called this function called cv to erode and we have called this on the mask variable itself so this function what it does is that it uses a kernel so again i am not going to go into the very detailed math mathematics of this 
बट द बेसिक आइडिया इज दैट इट डिक्रीजेज दीज बाउंड्रीज सो इरोजन इरोजन ऑपरेशन इट बेसिकली डिक्रीजेज इरोड अवे एट द बाउंड्रीज ऑफ दिस ऑफ दिस वाइट एरिया ओके तो एनी अभी तक कोई डाउट कोई तकलीफ ओके तो नेक्स्ट थिंग इज कॉन्टोर डिटेक्शन ओके तो इसके बाद मतलब ये अभी खत्म नहीं हुआ अभी हमने दो चीजें करी इसमें मतलब हमने पहले क्या किया फिल्टर किया उसके बाद हमने नॉइज निकाला दूसरा चीज है इसका बाउंड्री निकालना है दैट इज कॉन्टोर तो कॉन्टोर इज बेसिक नथिंग बट बाउंड्री एज इन कोई भी इमेज है उसमें लेट से दीज आर दीज आर इमेजेस ऑफ दिस कार्ड्स ओके सो ईच ऑफ दिस कार्ड्स दिस इज अ वेरी डिस्टिंक्ट इमेज सो वी टॉक अबाउट द फॉर्मल डेफिनेशन दिस इज फ्रॉम द ओपन सी वी डॉक्यूमेंटेशन इज अ कर्व ज्वाइनिंग ऑल कंटिन्यूअस पॉइंट हैविंग सेम कलर और इंटेंसिटी सो यू सी दैट फॉर दिस कार्ड ऑल द पॉइंट ऑन द बाउंड्री वुड हैव द सेम कलर so that is why this take uh, this is taken as a uh, this is taken as a contour contour is nothing but kisi koi bhi object detect ho raha hai uska boundary hai to jaise agar mera ye uh, uh, ye cube detect ho raha hai cube mein orange color detect ho raha hai to uska ek boundary rahega na so that boundary is the contour of that okay so let's try and see uh, let's see what 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 is a contour exactly so you can see that uh, there is a boundary that is getting detected here there is also one small red dot here but that is not uh, that is not very important that is a very small contour that is being detected so many times there there can be more than one contour that is getting detected some of them may be noise as well okay so there at the on that uh, particular uh, thing that trophy there is some orange color so that is why it's detect detecting that orange okay so you see that to some extent i have done my object detection because i am able to track this object wherever it is going and uh, surrounded with a contour so what is a contour here you see these numbers this is nothing but coordinates so if this is my boundary so all these pixel the all these uh, pixels on the boundary these pixels have some coordinates and the, this is the coordinates that are representing the contour so a contour is nothing but a list of coordinates that encircle a that encircle an object getting my point yes sir so if i want so you see that there were very small there were very small contour that were getting detected in this okay if i want to remove those small contours what i would uh, i would want to do is i would filter using area so i what i will do is that only a contour which has an area of greater than 200 pixels only that contour is going to be considered the other contours i am i am going to ignore so if i run that
even if there is some background noise structurally i think i will not say So you see that although earlier the red dots that were uh, that were appearing, all those are, have disappeared because those contours did not have an area of greater than two hundred, but this one has. So due to this, this is getting clearly detected. Now the next thing. Now I have uh, detected the image. My object detection is complete, but I still need to know. Still, I might need to know. What is the center of that object? The centroid. Okay, the centroid is. Uh, let's say this is uh, the center. So I want to calculate the centroid. So for that, I use uh, there is another function called CV two dot moments. So that CV two dot moments, I just pass the main contour to that, and I ca calculate the centroid values for this. Okay, and after that, I place this. Uh, I uh, I use this centroid values and uh, and uh, write that on the image itself. So, so moments would do what? Okay, so moments basically CV two moments. It captures a lot of information about the image or the contour that is. So if I uh, print CV, did I have? Okay, I again forgot to save. Stop printing at first. It's time to print this. Okay, so right now it's giving an error because there is no contour getting detected here. And as soon as I show this, you see that uh, this uh, contour is getting detected, and also the center is getting detected. So the center it is here. It is three sixty comma two eighty something. Changes a bit, but you see that the object is getting dragged, and I have the idea of where the center actually lies in the image. So, so if I see that this is the moments that is being printed, the CV two moments. So this is basically some uh, parameters related to the image. Okay, if I, I am, if I am uh, a little bit, uh, if, if you are curious, I, I might say let's uh, try and googling this. Best thing to do when you when you are not sure. Let's see CV two documentation image moments. So they haven't actually given an uh, idea of what. Okay, so calculates all the moments up to the third order of a polygon or rasterized shape. Function comm commutes moments up to the third order uh, or a vector shape, rasterized shape. So basically, it is uh, capturing some information with respect to the with uh, with respect to the contour that has getting uh, that has gotten detected. And the main thing that you need to understand here is this. To that cx and cy is usually the ratio between these two uh, between these two. So it's re returning a dictionary. You see that m zero zero has a certain value, m one zero has a certain value, m zero one has a certain value, m two zero and so on. 
So Cx is uh, is the ratio between m one zero and m zero zero. Okay, and Cy that is the y coordinate. It is the ratio between m zero one, m zero zero. So there is also another thing that we need uh, we need to uh, check for in this when we are trying to find the centroid. That is this value can never be zero because if uh, if this is a, if this value is zero, then there is a then it gives an error. It gives a, a divi division by zero error. So this value cannot can never be zero. So that is why I have put this try and accept uh, uh, try and accept code here. Okay. So. Let's try running this once again. Last one. Yeah. So you can see that this uh, gets detected pretty well. Yeah. So any questions till now? No, sir. Okay, fine. So now let's move on to the third part that is the invisibility cloak. So firstly, we'll uh, look at uh, the so for the invisibility cloak. Instead of uh, actually using uh, using the webcam, I'm using uh, I'm using a pre-recorded video. Yeah, this video is visible. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So one thing about this video is that I have used uh like for the first ten or twenty seconds I have kept the frame blank. The only thing you might be seeing is me in the background of that reflection reflection of that uh, TV. That is the only thing visible because I wasn't some reason I uh, the placement was not right. Uh. But uh, apart from that, this background is uh, totally blank. It is and it is static. There is no moving elements here. The second thing I have uh, we are using here is this green cloth. So again, this uh, this uh, also uses image processing. So this green cloth is basically used for uh, color filtering and whatever. Uh, Color is uh, getting detected. We you uh, we create a mask using that color. So the idea behind this, uh, behind creating and re creating a full fledged in invisibility cloak, the idea is that wherever this green. So what happens is that in the first five seconds, we take a snapshot of the background. Okay. And after that, what happens is that while the while we are uh, doing uh, while we are using this uh, green cloth while this is in the frame, wherever this green cloth is being detected, those pixels are replaced by the corresponding pixels of the background itself. So that gives an illusion of invisibility. It's obviously not true invisibility, but uh, let's just uh, pretend it is. Okay. So I'll uh, so we are actually a bit uh, overdue on time, but still I'll uh, try to take this fast, but as also try to cover as much uh, information as possible.
Okay, so here's the thing. So firstly, what we did, we did earlier in the object detection code as well. That is uh, the video cap. Uh, that we were capturing the video from a video capture device. That is a camera or something. Here we have captured this video from the from a actual video itself. Okay, so the invisibility cloak, uh, invisibility video, we are using that itself. And after that, we are running a loop for uh, I think sixty frames. And in that loop, we are uh, what we have done is that uh, we are capturing the background. Okay, so if I run this uh, run this part of the code, what I will see is. There is some Yeah. So this is the background of that. Uh, this is the background that is being captured in the first uh, uh, first five, uh, sixty frames. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, so we have uh, like if you look at the operation, this is nothing very different. We have the captured the background. We have stored this in a variable called background, obviously, and then we have just flipped that uh, uh, along one axis. We might not do choose to do that, or we may choose to do that. And also, I have also used the same resize image uh, function that we used earlier. Reason being that this image was captured from a phone, and these uh, to, and today and the phones are at, uh, have a very high resolution, so lots of megapixels. So the, that was not fitting into the image, so I had to resize that. So after that, next thing is we start reading the frames of the video itself. So again, this is more or less the same process as earlier. The only difference is that we have started re uh, reading the frames. Okay, so So there seems to be some error happening. See, I, there is such. Seems to be some kind of a lag here. Sure, why? This was working earlier, I don't know why it is not working.
so i get what is the issue sorry Uh, yeah so i made a silly mistake sorry for the interruption uh yeah so you also saw how live debugging works because uh, sometimes something goes wrong and uh, you don't know which part of the code so what i had made a mistake was i was not using cv2 im show so this kind of silly mistakes do occur so as you can see that this video is getting dis displayed okay now the next thing is again same color filtering so here i have already chosen the thresholds here 30 85 30 255 these are pre calibrated so are you guys following because there was a bit of uh, yeah uh, oh, sorry yeah hello yeah so okay so i guess uh, let's see what uh, what this shows so let's see what this mask is actually and also we can i think uh, in order to save time we can uh, we can uh, use this as well yeah so this is the video and uh, you see that in the background there is some green showing in the reflection so this green is also showing here but overall uh, the color filtering seems to be working pretty well like we are able to there is still a bit of noise so that noise can be removed by various methods right now we are doing some basic uh, dilation or something so let's try removing the noise in this i realized i hadn't uh, yeah so this removes a lot of noise still that green is visible you see this is uh, actually much better than what uh, earlier so earlier uh, we were not uh, using any noise filtering right now we are using noise filtering so this uh, this uh, thresholding is much better than what we had earlier okay so what we have done here is we have uh, used two functions here first is a morphology x that is nothing but a erosion followed by dilation so there is another there are a couple of more uh, uh no noise filtering functions uh, this is called uh, erode uh, open okay that is an erosion followed by a dilation okay so i have done uh, so here for filtering out uh, most of the noise what i have done is i have done uh, erode uh, i have applied the erosion once then a dilation and then again an erosion so that removes most of the noise here is this clear yes. why i am using these functions what is the reason kyu kar rahe hain theek hai so abhi iske baad what we have to do is creating an inverse mask so this is now what is function ka output kya hoga kya lagta hai
CV2 bitwise not mask. So do you guys know what is a not operation? It negates anything we have. या अगर नॉर्मल नॉट ऑपरेशन होता है कि एंड होगा तो नहीं सॉरी अगर वन होगा तो जीरो हो गया जीरो हो गया तो वन होगा बिटवाइज नॉट भी ऑलमोस्ट सिमिलर ही है इट बेसिकली इनवर्स द मास्क तो जहां जहां पे हमें पहले ब्लैक दिख रहा था वहां पे व्हाइट दिखेगा जहां पे ब्लैक व्हाइट दिख दिख रहा था वहां पे ब्लैक दिखेगा या यू सी दिस इज द मास्क दिस इज द इनवर्स मास्क and uh, this is the actual uh, image that we have so actual video okay so ye to ho gaya like we what we did abhi tak humne kya kiya color filtering kiya we removed the noise we created two mask ek uh, normal wala ek inverse wala after this we need to create the final output so for that firstly let's see what this is this one and remove तो कैन समी गैस यहाँ पे हो क्या रहा है वेर एवर देर इज अ मास्क द एक्चुअल वीडियो इज बींग शोन दैट यू आर पार्शियली करेक्ट Wherever there is the actual color shown, there the video gets visible. So, you remember the background that we captured not long ago. So wherever we are getting the mask, we are just uh, we are just adding that. Uh, we are just showing that uh, part of the background there. Okay. Yes, yes, I think so. That is uh, that is being done through this uh, bitwise AND operator. So for uh, uh, applying this background, uh, applying this mag background to the sorry, applying this mask to this dis bitwise AND. Similarly, I can do the reverse. I am doing the bitwise AND for the second mask as well. Okay. So for this, let's see what happens.
no this is a uh, this is this is uh, the actual video that is running and this is the inverse mask we say this is not very clear right now but it will be in a while so wherever this uh, cloth is visible it's just applying that black color there okay that is why we used an inverse mask because we wanted to add this black color to wherever this thing is uh, wherever our uh, green uh, color is being shown so once so what what do we do now we basically we uh, you saw two different uh two different results of bitwise and okay now what we have to do is just add those two and from that we get the final output Okay. Yeah. So this is the final what we were trying to do for so long. Obviously, this is not a true invisibility. Uh, this is not totally perfect. Obviously, as you can see that there are still many improvements. The noise can be reduced. also you will see that there is a bit of uh, brightness difference between these two things so that uh, that is also that is because of the many reasons because what happens with uh, cameras these days is that uh, these cameras uh, change the brightness automatically so that gets recorded in the video as well so that is why when in the starting the brightness might have been low and in the ending the brightness might have been high so you see that different clear difference there but overall that is the idea here so any questions So I guess that is uh, if uh, if you guys have uh, still have any questions, I'll wait for a uh, wait for five to ten minutes. After that, I think we can close the session. So if you have any questions regard related to anything relate uh, what all we covered in this uh, session, you can uh, you can ask now. yeah so the github repo i as i said i will uh, upload that i will uh, i have to upload that to a github repo so i so you guys will get a mail as well from elsi so i'll uh, make sure to include that uh, all this uh, material in that yes so the notebook as well the notebook with all of that will be in the github repo Okay. Anything else? Okay. Uh, before everyone uh, leaves the meeting, uh, there is a quiz which you need to attend in order to get the certificate. So I'll share the certificate link here. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, quiz link here. You need to attend it in ten minutes.
guys so we have shared the quiz link here uh, kindly attend the quiz uh, in 10 minutes of time and we'll close out in 10 minutes so yes Thank you everyone for joining uh, and watching this live from YouTube and yeah, I hope you guys end up enjoyed the session. See you in the next technical session. Thank you. Hello everyone. Excuse me. Uh, I'm 